listening to somebody new Talking about singing and playing for you Won't you cut in love with me under these cold covers Music for your brain Fight for your goddamn right. Fight for your right. Is there any regret with that? Oh, God. <laughs> yes, no, fight for your right. You want to start with you want to start that one? Yeah. Yeah. I will tell you the story behind that. Are we rolling? God. We are fight rolling. Fight for your right to party. We are 100% rolling right now. Yeah, fight oh, for your right to party. Okay. Fight for so, your right. I want to cut Beastie off Boys, the right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> let, let's like cut off like let's... everything before it is. And cut. All right. I, don't worry. Let's yeah. not put that I'm worried. You're a good I'm a little worried. Ready? We're just joking. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, what made you guys do that song? Um, well... Somebody made us do it. Yeah, um, it. I didn't do it, shit. I mean, to, to be fair, uh, to be fair, to be fair. it is kind of my fault. Because, uh, we were sitting, me and Danny were sitting at a bar, and I was just like, hey man, we got a week till show, why don't we just, you know, cover a song, just something simple, something easy, because I heard a Beastie Boys song, I was like, let's do Fight for Your Right, just for the fun, just for the fun of it. He's like, okay, cool. We ended up practicing a lot. Nobody was against the idea. It was a very simple kind of thing. And uh, so we get to the show. We do the song. And then the next thing I know, Danny's like looking at me. He's like, okay, we're, we're going to record it. We're going to do a video. I go to Taylor. I was just like, are you are you hearing this? We're doing what now? And nobody wanted to do that at all. <laughs> Not, that was actually. But it happened. Yeah, it happened. It, happened. it happened. Nobody was having a good time with the music video either. Well, Danny was. I, it's it's like, like I was, had a good time. I, I, I was kind of having We're a really good time good because I saw it as a big joke. Yeah. Like, I, I, mean, I saw the satire that could be there, yeah, but I could, I everybody could else was not. It was a big song. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, there was, a, there was a moment. There was um there was, there was a rough moment there. Me, me and Alan had just taken some acid. And, uh, and we, and we, <laughs> before the video? Well, no, not before the video. This was before the satire. This, <laughs> like this was like a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. This was like a couple weeks in advance. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're walking around the neighborhood, we're, we're, we're tripping, we're having a good time, and we're thinking about what we're about to do. And, <laughs> oh, no. and we're thinking about how we're going to go and cover Fight for Your Right by the Beastie Boys, and we're going to, and I'm going to put my penis in a white claw can, and, and we're all going to, we're all going to drink and, and film ourselves just, just being general, just, just general jackasses. We were like... And, and we were thinking, is, is this, is this really punk rock? Is this what this is supposed to be? Is this what we wanted for our band? And and you know the two of us anyway. I know I know Christian. He uh he didn't really give a shit about really? it. He was just like we're just doing it. I don't care. <laughs> Classic. But um, I thought it was funny. But but no. T- <laughs> to me personally, it was just like man, like whatever the brand princess is, I don't want it to be a cover of the Beastie Boys doing doing <laughs> not not now. like this, not like this. Understandable. Yeah. Not so, like I don't want to be remembered yeah. Yeah. for that. But yeah, y'all were. I guess y'all classified y'all yourself as punk back then well other people did <clears throat> like it, it's, it's a weird thing because like when we first got together it was like i i i uh i met christian first out of out of all these dudes but um like we got together when we were working together and and steak and shake of all places and yeah. uh <laughs> and and we were just like yeah we, we want to start a band we would love to have a band and like what kind of band is it going to be and we're like we just want to do something weird and experimental <laughs> and it was like hey i play synthesizers and I'm like, well, I'm I'm a basic white guy, and I play guitar, <laughs> and and so we tried to make something out of that, and and over time, eventually, it was like, we, we were just making weird shoegazy stuff for a while, and uh, and then and then we uh, we we got Alan involved, and uh, and and he was doing, I, I guess it was just poetry and spitting. Uh, I'm suddenly Crap. really aware of how long I've been talking, but <laughs> no, keep talking. But, uh, but, but ultimately, <laughs> like the original lineup with Colin and uh, Jerry and Alan, uh-huh. me and Christian, none of us wanted to be a punk band. None of us were into that. Colin had just come out of a punk band, two punk bands. He was in Rotten Stitches and Eliminate Earth, yeah. like the punkiest of the punk. Mm-hmm. And he was like, "I hate punk. I don't want to be in a punk band. Fuck punk." And um, and be downstairs. Let's yeah. make a surf punk song. Yeah, and, 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 and I was like, yeah, I'm with that. I don't really want to do punk either. And like Alan was like, well, I certainly don't want to do punk. And somehow it just the way that we came together was punk, probably because it's just the easiest. Well, thing. I mean, a drummer has a lot to say about where your genre is as a band because they, mm-hmm. they kind of set that tone and that drive mm-hmm. of where you're going, like directionally, I guess. Especially yeah. in the verses. Like I remember when I first met you guys at that house party. Y'all had like punky verses, but big like spacey kind of rock ballady courses. So mm-hmm. it was like 
a disjointed feel to y'all's music, but it was still sick. Like it was still like you still had a theatrical feel to it. It was like really performative. It was really like raw and like it was just weird music. But I guess you would have to classify it as punk if you were going to classify it as something, just yeah. because of that backbeat and that drive. I mean, when we had uh, when we had Colin, I mean, he definitely brought a punk element to the band. And I mean, I've uh, I mean, I've always this is going to sound like, I've always felt more like uh, pop and everything because I, yeah. I love pop music. I love hip hop music. For the longest time, I didn't want hip hop in this band at all mm-hmm. because, like, I don't know, like I tried to make it with hip hop, but that. I couldn't do anything with it because I felt like nobody was like wanting to work with me so I was like fuck it I'll sing and everything like that so like there was a pop element to it there was the punk element and you know Taylor is what am I? I don't know you, you, <laughs> you, you, you play guitar I mean you got some pretty psychedelic little little grooves going yeah. and of course <clears throat> Christian with his little keyboard yeah I hear that I, I heard that in y'all's old music it was like five separate separate people making music like for sure like different directions someone one of my friends uh said that you guys sounded like graffiti with five hands like doing the graffiti like it was like beautiful but at the same time it was like how did this come about because it's so strange like there's so many different directions going in the music that you couldn't really put your finger on like where it stemmed from like where was the first lick of y'all's song? Like, where did it... Like, usually when you hear a song, you can hear, like, oh, this was definitely started on, like, an acoustic guitar. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. built from there. But y'all's music, it was kind of, like, I think, all... I think that's kind of, like, indicative of how we are as a group, just in general. Like, one of Alan's ex-girlfriends actually made a comment after a show, like, yeah, you guys don't even look like you hang out together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've like, all, yeah, we don't. <laughs> we've, we've always, like, kind of brought that... Me and Taylor have always, like, brought that... Like, we don't look like we belong... We don't look like we sit at the same lunch table. Yes. Like, at all. Yeah. Like... Yeah, which we're was like actually, the breakfast club of, yeah. I, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which was actually interesting, because it's like, we're called Princess, and whenever we brought Dan in, it was like, you know... None of us, none of us knew Dan. He came in because you know Danny made a Facebook post looking for a bass player, and 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 he comes walking into our unit, and I see this guy, and I'm like, all right, he's a big old beardly rednecky looking guy. Thought he was a good does, old boy. Does he really want to be in a band called Princess? He's purpose. got a van shirt on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I did that on purpose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to fit in. Huh? Yeah. Trying, <laughs> brand new. Yeah, but all right. he, he I showed up. Boot, I left my boots yeah. at home. <laughs> <laughs> No, he came in and he laid it down, and like he definitely has that um, that redneck sensibility about him. But I like it. Like I like I feel like I feel like that's part of part of the image we're sort of you know building here. It's part of the brand. It's like we make songs that are wildly different from one another. We go in a different direction all the time. We're all completely different people, and we want to uh, bring that to the table as authentically as possible. <laughs> that's a good way to be man because if you have a bunch of yes men that are saying the same thing it can get kind of boring mm-hmm. and kind sure. of like sound like everything or everyone else yeah and the yeah. weird thing is is I don't feel like we actually fight more than particularly that many other bands you know not anymore yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude we, we've had our moments in the years like it's it's you know we're, but it's a thing like in princess like that is what we are like we're all just a bunch of fucking divas and yeah. it's about just like whether or not we're gonna how much we're gonna be able to tolerate you know one another speaking but for yourself. speaking <laughs> of wow. speaking of all that you guys have been getting new members you have two new members here that you didn't have previous that's true why don't you uh, say why don't you say hey to oh, everybody hey. <laughs> so yeah so there obviously it was some i guess disagreements or whatever you guys had going on in the past so like that formation of a new sound or new direction is something that people don't get to hear about very often so if you guys could like go into what sparked that or like how that came about and you don't have to get super crazy about names or like Mm -hmm. dragging people under the bus but like just that new direction sonically if if it was like a musical decision was it like a personality decision what kind of sparked the change well, it All was. Above. <laughs> it was really like, it was really a situation where, where we were um, working with originally the five group, five group of people. You know, we had Jerry, we had Colin, we had me, Christian, and Alan, and uh, and we really we had fun when it was fun, and when we liked what we were doing, but it was kind of getting to the point where, where it was it was getting more difficult to communicate with each other in, in that setting. 
So there was a there was a point where we were like, all right, I guess I guess we might have to just end Princess because none of us are really seem to be getting what we want out of it. Musically, uh, you mean, or well, like personally? Mu- musically, personally, I think we were all cool with each other. Like yeah. like everyone who's ever been in this band, I have a lot of love for them, you know, and um, and like I'm as far as I'm concerned, I'm still I'm still totally cool with them. I I saw Colin the other day. We hung out all day. And then, you know, I, I go see Jerry every now and then. We used to work together. Alan still works with Jerry. Yeah. Jerry's the man. Yeah. No, we, we love Jerry. Yeah, there, um, there was a one point in time where we were basically thinking that we were going to break up. And, like, I, I had basically said that I was I was leaving and I was going to try and start some sort of, like, MGMT-style <coughs> synth-pop type of band, like, yeah. psychedelic synth-pop type of band. But then after about a month, like, it, like... It was a very turbulent month, I, I believe. Oh, yeah. It was like the beginning of last year, and like one minute it's like we're all we're breaking up, and then next minute it's like I got a unit to start working on my synth pop project, and then suddenly it seems like Princess was back. I don't even know what how it all happened, but suddenly Princess was back together. <laughs> well, honestly, like there was really there was really one person who drove Princess back together, and it was Danny. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he did not. He, he did not want us to break up. I mean, like when we, I'll be honest with you, I was the only one who wanted to keep the band together still, because <laughs> like I didn't want it to break up at all. Like I felt like it was the only thing I had going for myself. It was the only thing I could be proud of, like, and everything like that. And like you know, we would talk to Danny. He's like, no, like I, I think everybody that I spoke to at that house show with uh, word problems, and I think House and Now played as well like we would tell them and they'd be like no no y'all can't break up like and that was a good show like, it yeah was that a was really a really good show. show but everybody was telling us like nope you can't break <laughs> up and i was just like eh, you know i mean I, I figured i figured it was gonna happen you know? essentially after that danny came to us and he was like hey i've got a lot of experience with this why don't you guys come over hang out with me and the jays we'll we'll sit down and we'll talk it through we'll figure out what the issue is so we did and it was like it was really just a communication thing and we found that we were able to work through it, and, and we moved on, and, uh, and, and we adjusted a few things, but ultimately we, we were re-inspired, and we were writing more music, and we were taking it, I'd say, in a more patient direction, and we were looking at things piece by piece, and we just started to be more and more productive, and it was ultimately really good for us. Yeah, I mean, I can tell in the direction that y'all's sound is going in, it's more like what I, <clears throat> I guess, heard snippets of in the past mm-hmm. where it would shine through, like, of the chaos and the punk, I guess, um, yeah. into more of, I guess, what would you describe yourself as going forward? I mean, I know you guys don't like to get t- tied down in sh- t- terms Well, don't yeah. tell genre, me what you told the barista the <laughs> but, other day. <laughs> <laughs> but you said, like, pop, right? Like, so you have that kind of, like, grounding in I, pop. Yeah, yeah. I've all, yeah, I mean, I... Which is a very vague term. Yeah, but like, it is vague. But like, something catchy. Yeah, catchy stuff. Catchy I'm stuff, all about the catchy. Been, yeah, yeah. I've all, I'm all about the catchy choruses. Like, you know, really making a point. I mean, that's the chorus. That's what people know. That's usually what the only thing people know sometimes. You yeah. know, to the casual listener of Prince, Princess, they probably know the chorus of, you know, No Good. Like, I, you know, that's the pop element of it. And of course, like, you know, the hip. Dude. When we went to record No Good, I like we weren't originally gonna do that song, I don't think, or we were trying. We we weren't gonna do that, yeah. but I, I yeah. kind of insisted that we do it. And like <laughs> we ended up going to the studio. I had nothing written for it. Yeah. Oh, nothing yeah. at all. Oh. And like we go in and they're just like, We're doing this song. I was like, Taylor, I have nothing written for this at all. Um, the guy that was recording us, he's like, Hey man, you just take your time, just like write me a little notebook and do that. I know interest in turning it into a hip-hop song it just kind of happened nice and it was really weird because they've always wanted me to rap more in the band and i've always kind of like wanted to be away from that but like i can't imagine no good like being anything else yeah, yeah i can't imagine it without that, that was, part yeah that was for sure the way i visualized it to begin with was that for you to rap over it and it was like oh people have this idea of of what rap in a rock song is yeah. You know, from all the new metal that happened, but you know, I honestly, I don't think seriously that that no good sounds like that. I think it's its own thing. But it's like you know, when, when it happened, when, when no good happened, it was like, all right, I want to put trumpets on it now too. And it was like, so you want it to be a ska song? And I'm like, no, I just want trumpets on it. 
and I want them to go like this. And it's like, and it doesn't sound like a ska song, and it doesn't sound like a new metal song. But when I when, when I tell people about it, I like to you know, facetiously say, hey, we uh we, we combined ska and new metal because we figured everyone would hate that the most. So the thing about so it is like good. when he, when he tells pe- when he tells people that when he tells people that I hate it. But when I when I showed my uh, my little sister, she's like sixteen. When I showed her the music video, she showed all her friends and. Uh, school and everything someone messaged back i'm just like it, it sounds really good it sounds like new metal meets ska meets eminem oh, i'm just no. like oh my god literally everything about that <laughs> sentence i hated <laughs> it's awesome. but you can't afford it you can't, can't, can't escape it. saying yeah. this about me yeah. <laughs> oh my god and i was just like removing like putting all your personality into a piece and then once it's there you take it all out again you're no longer emotionally invested in that thing whatever people want to call it they can call it that you know yeah, that's hard to like step away like that and really take a look at yourself in the mirror, you know. And uh, I mean, it's hard for me to look at myself in the mirror. It's hard for me to look at any of these people. Oof. Like, <laughs> big How was the uh, the uh, music video recording process for you guys? Uh, the for no good or for no good? Yeah. Yeah. Um, shit. I'm trying to think. I, I mean. I, I had a general idea of how I wanted it, and I mean, for the most part, we we did that. I mean, there was the the actual show itself that went really well. I mean, there was nothing really too big that we, I mean, we we had never really done this before, and it kind of happened over a period of weeks and everything. I mean, it was really fun. Um, you know, I, I can't really say too much about it because like I, I've never done it before, other than it was really fun. It was different. I love working with Brandon. I'm sure everybody else. Uh, well, y'all too haven't worked with Brandon, but y'all are going to. But uh, I well, mean, well, they haven't worked with Brandon. They don't know who the hell Brandon is. <laughs> who's Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. But uh, yeah, no, it was great. Brandon, yeah. Working yeah. with Brandon's been been really good, and uh, we you know we really yeah. look forward to working with him more. Actually, I, I love the way that the start that the um, that the no good video came about. Actually, because it was right after we recorded the song in studio, we were down in Valdosta working with Lee Diaz recording that. And um, on our way up, we stopped at a bar in Atlanta, and the owner of Star Bar actually just happened to be there. Kale, the owner of Star Bar, and uh, and he heard our song. Yeah, and... we only heard like the first thirty seconds of the song, <laughs> and he's just like. You're doing the music video at my bar. That's awesome. Hey, you're, yeah. We're going to have a full performance, all this stuff. So he suggested it to y'all, the show. Yes, thing. he did. It was a good idea, too. It I was. like the story yeah. aspect of it. I like how it's, like, cohesive, like, mm-hmm. beginning, middle, end, like, really came together. And you have, like, a superstar boy, mm-hmm. front man, <laughs> that just, like, is supposed to be on camera. So, yeah. like, that helps a lot. Don't give me sure. can't do anything <laughs> else. Don't listen to you too much. I, there's just something yeah. about the way you're just, like, yeah, I don't know. You have that Pretty. camera, camera quality. <laughs> and now, is Star Bar still closed? Or uh, no, they got they, come back? they got saved, right? Did they get saved? Yeah, yeah I don't. They're, they're looking it, for new I, management. Last I thought time they I got heard. closed altogether. Well, at least you guys got to do it. That's yeah, we got to do the. Hair. If if that's the case, it was the last music yeah. video. Or... Actually, after it came out, I, I went ahead and sent it to them, but it came out right after they closed, and I was like, uh, if you guys want to look at it. This is, your video <laughs> Jeez. like before the pandemic they were doing like uh like comedy nights and stuff like that then mm-hmm. like the the person that owns the space was looking for new management for star bar so that's the last i heard okay. so but, it could come back it's, it yeah just it's still it's them. still a thing but the pandemic happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that was actually the roughest yeah. thing about no good is like we were we released that song and immediately we had people hitting us up saying, "Hey, play this show, play this show." Play. You were one of those people, yeah. Actually, yeah. And and immediately just nothing. It was, yeah. It was a mess. And then we we're like, "Damn, we we built all the hype train up, and now it's, we're done." So we have to do it again. A lot of bands <laughs> feel like that. So like, how has that affected y'all? I mean, okay. y'all, I guess we're kind of in that reformation process anyway. So. Or it was it was in a way it was a bit convenient because we got to consolidate power and. And right after that was when, you know, we started working with Michael and Dan. Yeah. And so it was like, well, we, we can just get as prepared as we want to be, you know? Yeah. And that's been fine with me. I, I don't know if it's been grading or painful for them, but I've been fine with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was, uh, I read an article a couple weeks ago about how, like, someone was taking a positive spin of that no venues, like, everything shut down in terms of the music scene, saying, like, this will weed out the bands who aren't supposed to be there, who aren't taking it seriously, who aren't like super motivated and like 
let the rest shine through. Like the ones who are really in it to win it, the ones who are really trying to like, you know, put their nose to the grindstone and work through this. No, like, no money coming in, nothing. Like no shows, no like nothing to promote. For sure. Type of stuff. So. For sure. I don't know, like a mentality I tend to have about it is um, is no matter how hard things get, no matter what happens, it's like, I just look at it like we have not yet been truly tested. Because anything is gonna happen, so this this that we're dealing with right now, it, this this is not the worst <laughs> thing any band has ever had to deal with. This is not the worst any artist has ever had to deal with. True. We have not yet been tested, not until we have been killed doing what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if I get killed on stage, you know what? I'm fine with that. Just make me a nice little mural in Atlanta yeah, or something. At least <laughs> on stage. You know? Yeah. And another thing that helps is like kind of everyone is in it together. Like you know, you're not the only. You're not like falling behind the other bands because you're not you're the only ones not doing stuff yeah right i mean th- i'm not gonna say any names of course but like you can say names <laughs> you, can say some name beef. you can say my name i, I <laughs> start I, some beef i, I, I mean oh. to the person watching i mean um fucking light sequence no there was there's one person that you know he would always kind of be like um you know, oh, we're we're gonna look at this video. It got this many views, and we're doing so much better. I'm just like, dude, it's like, why do you have that oh, mentality? The comparative, like, like, yeah, like I don't like that because like I've loved working with bands like Word Problems, House of Now, um, Mount Royal, The Light Sequence. Uh, you know, every Rose band, Yellow. yeah, every band that we've been working with, like you know, we're kind of in it together, like, and we got each other shows, like you know, stuff like that, and it's always fun. And it's nice to have that little community. Like, you know, I, that's been I a love common that. theme of this podcast is like the community in Atlanta has been so supportive and so cool. So, yeah, I mean, it is you can get toxic if you start comparing yourself in a competitive yeah, sense know, to the other bands yeah. instead of like an inspirational sense. Like, oh, look what they did. Like, we could learn from that. Mm-hmm. Like, or not like, oh, we're better than them. Like, we can do better than that. I don't know. It depends on how you spin it. Well, it's like, I think that the competitive aspect, for me anyway, for my mindset, I like the competitive aspect because whoever played before my band, I want my band to do better. Than oh, them. for sure. I want, I want, I want every band to be great because otherwise yeah. I'm not fucking enjoying myself. Yeah. I want them to be great because I want to enjoy them, but I still want to, I still want my band to fucking kill it. For sure. So if I see a band doing something that um, that is awesome that my band is just not so awesome at, I'm gonna be like, we're fixing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's the inspiration sense instead of like. Putting, putting them down since like right yeah you can use that motivation for sure the competitive motivation I love that mm-hmm. that's a good way to look at it for sure um back to your video so I was saying like I was bragging on you being like a star guy you know you. whatever <laughs> supposed to be on camera great front man crazy energy like when I first met you you were on the ground like kicking and screaming like all, all over the place uh, stage presence what like inspired you to go that hard on stage or like what kind of was it like movies or was it like drugs. bands or <laughs> <laughs> sure, drugs um, like what uh who you know, are your influences frontman wise um you know my, i'll be honest like i i always try to have a set plan before i go on stage but it never goes accordingly like i always i kind of wing it like but growing up like you know, I loved, like, the front men that were, like, friggin' crazy. Like, I mean, you have Axl Rose. Guns okay. N' Roses was the first band that I ever really got into. And Axl Rose, he may be an asshole. Actually, he is an asshole. <laughs> but, like, he, he's asshole. great. Like, he's great stage performance. And I've, all, yeah. I've always kind of looked at that. And, I mean, like, I, you know, I've... Iggy Pop, Jim Morrison, like they're always like kind of yeah. wild on stage. You never know what you're getting into, like when you see them. I mean, it's like watching like a Quentin Tarantino film. Like you never know what's gonna happen. I like, can see the Iggy Pop with the cross-legged, like <laughs> weird lean that you get yeah. for yeah. sure. I definitely. But like, see I just, I just like being as weird as possible on stage. You know, I try to have a plan and never really goes that way. So I just end up just going all out, going crazy, just moving to the music kind of thing. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. It was actually like um, I'm gonna bring up acid again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, after me and Christian started actually hanging out with Alan, we uh, we took him out into the woods and we made him do acid with us. And like there, there were there were no plans at the time for um, 
you know, doing a band together because, like, you know, I'd just been working with Christian for a while about building our thing up, and we had had ups and downs with that. Yeah. But um, when we took him out to took him out to the woods to just you know vibe out there, it was just like just the way that he was. It was like you could tell. Yeah. Maybe it was just the drugs, but <laughs> but, but but I was looking at Christian like Christian. Yeah. This is a front man. This is a front. I don't know and what the I hell agreed. he thinks he's doing right I now, but this is a front agreed. man, and he's gonna be a front man. And, yeah, and as like, he as he well, picks he up the rubber mind. duck. Yeah, well, he, like, likes that. he showed us nothing musically yet. You could just tell. <laughs> That's just, the <laughs> first thing I thought when he's I got met him too. <clears throat> yeah. Well, something the first thing I theatrical. thought when I met him, you were like, it was a house party or something, and you were organizing parking, and you were freaking out. Dude, so the thing about the you thing so about stressed. that, and I was like, was, this guy's either an asshole or he's having like the worst would, day of his life. Yeah, I was literally having the worst yeah. day of my life because like <laughs> my girlfriend at the time was like yelling at me. She's like, "You yeah. gotta do this. You gotta get this." I was like, "Oh, why didn't we plan this?" I was just like, "Hey guys, um, I was wondering oh if maybe you could like move over there." Yeah, you know, like I would like. So that was my first impression for you, but then like after that, it was like you were a great person. But yeah, that was funny. Yeah, <laughs> just great. like seeing you just like. Like panicking and like so stressed out you're just like that, uh, dude out. and the, the weird the weird part about <laughs> it is is that is uh going back to uh you know how i am on stage panic is always real because i feel like something going on in my life always goes wrong in our shows like okay. something is always something's always going on in our shows oh, yeah. and it's always affecting me and like i get on stage and i'm just like okay put all that panic anxiety on stage and just release it on like Channel just it, go, yeah, yeah just go sure. fucking crazy yeah. Yeah. yeah the speaking audience of, can feel that man that's powerful stuff for real like speaking of like things going wrong on stage like i have a big setup with my synths and yeah. stuff and like there almost every single time we have played there's been something that has messed up with my rig so it's like people aren't stage, used to rigging that up yeah it's like i i I've had multiple times where one of my keyboards will just like fail on me, so I have to like basically wing it on another keyboard and replay that with a totally different patch live in nice. front of people. And like <laughs> oh I, you're you're in the moment of doing that, so it's just like you can't panic about that. You just no. have to just be like, okay, we're doing this now. Yeah. And like that's happened to me almost every show. Something has messed up, and I've had to do something different live. And then people are like, oh, that's great. And like. It's the beauty of it, man. If you act like nothing's wrong, nothing's wrong, you know? Yeah. It's the yeah. jazz mentality. You play a wrong note twice, then it's right. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> well, every note is right in jazz. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It's just jazz. Man. All right. I, think, I think it's part of, like, a bit of the juxtaposition of what we're doing is because, like, there's always that, there's always that chaos in our shows, you know? And we're always trying not for there not to be so much chaos, but it's always there, and everyone always loves it. And we're just like, well... I, Fine, I, all right. <laughs> I mean, what do you expect having five people in a band? Chaos. Yeah, don't you just love it when you play a show and someone comes up to you and just like, that was a great show, and you're just like, no, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. This went wrong. Yes. This went wrong. You're not allowed to take compliments. <laughs> well, it's always like it's always been hard as a musician because you know every single fuck up you make, mm. but yes, to somebody who's never seen you before, it's that's so. Hard. It's hard for me to like take like, like compliments yeah. because it's just like uh like you know doing music doing art like it's such a vulnerable kind of thing and like someone like compliments you you're just like whoa and i like i just kind of freeze up i'm just like you really you, you like it <laughs> you know you like you like take it I, so seriously you know, yeah. like, wow someone actually likes this mm. yeah like you like the way that i whine about my dumb shit like, why <laughs> yeah. would you like that that's literally <laughs> all i'm doing is just whining yes all right so we went into alan's inspiration but what like as a band of like new musicians or musicians that are still modern are like pushing you guys forward to like do new things not in terms of like what got you started with music like not those old influences but what bands are you like what <coughs> bands are inspiring you guys now in terms of your instruments or any individual can answer this like it doesn't have to be as a band that's a good question and like i i don't personally i don't really um I'm not really sure because whenever you write something or you play something, or you have an idea, like it comes about in a really subconscious way. So it's like it could be like a collection of any type of influence. It may not even be a musical yeah. influence. I'm just like, talking about like what what are you listening to that inspires you right now? Like in terms of new bands making new music. Well, I listen to a lot of hipster music. <laughs> so me like, too. And like me too. And well, I'm gonna I'm like, gonna be cringing like, over like here. Like, <laughs> like me and 
me and Taylor had like loved like swans and yeah. gorilla okay. toss All and right. stuff like that. And I, I know we got Alan on That's the gorilla it. toss mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Like, uh, I know with me, I've been listening to a lot of like minimal electronic stuff that like it's just really spacey. So you can just chill out and like you can play a video game like Minecraft too. Yeah. And okay. it just like envelops you in the space. And I've been trying to like with this band, nothing by like how much I can do with like the synthesizers and stuff, I've been listening to more minimal stuff so that like when it comes to the grand scheme of everything else going on, I know where to like place it minimally in the mix, but it also brings it out. So yeah, it's like that's something that I, I've been personally doing. Yeah. So it's like when it comes to band specifically i have to look at my spotify <laughs> because i just like put a list of all of them and then i just put a mix and i just listen to them uh i love what you just said though about like bringing that minimalist or like a different genre type of music into this band that is definitely not that mm-hmm. but it's like the bringing of other genres or other influences into a different medium is what creates like new sounds so like with y'all it could be anything because you all said you're so different like y'all came from such different backgrounds different like stylings so like what can come out of y'all's music is going to be different like for sure like it's not going to be something you've heard before which is great I see a little bit more bluegrassiness in our future now too <laughs> oh, oh. and Dan you're just going to be uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Just there. laughs> come on man bring it up. I'm the token country fan here so. okay. I like country too I, well me and Michael the new guys are Token country wow, <laughs> coming from the drum and bass, kind of yeah. interesting. So, Listen, every, that might have something to do with the rhythm section. I'm yeah. Did y'all over. play in like country bands before this no, band? When you joined? Like that. No. Just, uh, you know, kind of a, what kind of bands were you all in before you joined this Misfit crew? Uh, Metal and punk. I guess. Yeah, mostly blues. Okay. My background. So. Cool. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, when we met Michael, um, we used to practice in a storage unit in Buford, and uh, he had a band over there. <laughs> That he was actually playing. Stage. It was like um, I would describe what you guys were doing as like you know, kind of like, kind of like on the uh, on the indie rock emo flavored side of things, you know. Michael loves Modest Mouse, and like I can describe like most of the shit that I would hear. I was like, that sounds very Modest Mouse sounding. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I fucking I fucking love Modest Mouse. Mm-hmm. But but then I guess we we stole him away from that band. Yeah, that was dying out as they, as they were imploding. <laughs> 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 still sounds really good like when you guys played like oh that was i think i, I jammed really with y'all stuff. like once and it was really fun yeah mm-hmm. taylor and christian too yeah. 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 yeah 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 i jammed with you guys a few times yeah amidst the flurry of vodka and oh <laughs> god so much vodka, vodka. Yeah. man's <laughs> always shoving that in your face and some vodka i'm drunk i'm just like yes you are let's get more drunk <laughs> all right back to no good video <clears throat> Y'all's promotion for that video was hilariously sick. I like your social media promotion. In terms of like the hype up, the countdown, the weird, everything about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do y'all like plan that out? Like, Do y'all think about that a lot? Like, do you, you're, in terms of like the social Taylor. media. <laughs> like, yeah, Taylor, okay, who's the mask? Okay, Taylor I figured. I figured Taylor, it Taylor, Taylor definitely uh, gets, I mean, like, he came into practice one day. It was just like, hey, I have an idea. Let's do a countdown kind of thing. Like, the one, the two, the, like, how many days. And, like, we kind of just. <laughs> and the rest of us uh, said, okay. Yeah, we, we, we would, like, kind of brainstorm, uh, you know, what to do as far as, like, for which day and everything. I couldn't tell you yeah. who came up with I, what. Or, I pulled up a Word document. And I, and, I, and I made sure each day was a specific thing, and I made sure it was planned out right, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we, and now I feel like for the next release, we're going to have to do something like that, but it can't be just like that. So now I'm stressed about that. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Well, you got to have someone to worry about that kind of stuff, because yeah. mo- so many musicians hate self-promotion. Mm-hmm. Like, hate the social media aspect of, well, like, it, the it, music it, industry. and the It's so cringy to so many people, but mm-hmm. it's, like, so necessary if you want... I mean, in the beginning... People to enjoy your stuff on. In the beginning, like, you know, I mean, before we release um, the EP, like, so fucking long ago, like, we were kind of weird about promoting it. Like, we kind of, like, I I mean, I'll be honest with you, I know this is going to sound just as cringy as I thought, like, promoting your stuff was, but, like, it was kind of like one of those things, like, 
I'm not promoting that. I'm not going to be that guy that says I'm in a band. Like, I don't want to do that shit. Now I'm just like, eh, you kind of have to do that. Like, you got to promote. You got to say, hey, this is my music. I'm proud of it. You should listen to it. You'll like it. Oh, yeah. Like, you know? yeah. I remember, like, when we first did the EP or whatever, and we had, like, well, Colin had made just, like, a shit ton of you know press cds oh, or whatever yeah. i have one in my car yeah oh my god <laughs> I, and it looked I, up, I did it? yeah you know, i did like i was going to like a lot of different places at the time just going everywhere like venues and all this other stuff and i was just shamelessly self-promoting us i was just like hey i have a band here's an ep here's an ep here's an ep here's an ep taylor and i taylor and i went to chicago and uh to riot fest and we would throw CDs of the band. I threw some at the front bottoms <laughs> oh, and wow. the voids. Yeah. And... I think we did something that I guess we're not supposed to do, but I got I got a whole bunch of like flowery wrapping paper, and I wrapped them all up in like flowery wrapping paper, and like um, and we just went up to bands. I got I found like strategic times whenever they would like stop playing, I would just chuck them at them. <laughs> Yikes! I actually, I, uh, Alkaline Trio, Matt Skiba, I, I actually like hit his, I, I hit his amp head with one, oh, no. and he ended up picking it up and being like, "Hey, I think someone, I think a lady out there lost their uh, purse. What, what is this?" And he handed it to a roadie, and he walked away with it. Oh, no. <laughs> I got one at Lagwagon though. And Lagwagon actually listened to it, so that was cool. <laughs> That's cool. That is cool. Yeah, but um, also like during that time, I, I took a bunch to like a music store, and I was like, "Hey." I got all these CDs. Can I just put them here on the desk and you can just give them to people for free? And they're like, yeah, we'll do that. Hell yeah, we'll do that. And then later on, like, they posted on their page that, hey, we're jamming the CD by Princess right now. We love it. And I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, cool. the more you ask, the more, like, people say yes. Mm -hmm. Like, and gotta, it's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. So right. social media is the ultimate numbers game. Like, yeah. get it out to the most people possible. Eventually, you'll get a couple clicks. And mm -hmm. then someone might get turned on your music. But it is, it feels cringy, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, from the beginning, I wanted to promote. It was just always, like, how do you promote the right way, you know? Without without appearing, without right. putting off the wrong desperate. vibe. Desperate. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, all we're all fucking desperate. Everyone yeah. who starts a band is fucking yeah. desperate. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's like, why are you getting up on stage trying to make people, like, listen to you? You're obviously, you need attention. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, 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 we, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we clearly have some problems with attention. Yeah. I gotta pee. What well, would a daddy issue? <laughs> Me too. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get Didn't we already talk about this? No, that's yeah. Yeah. I drank a lot of water. Yeah. Hold it. Hold okay, it. Okay. We're almost done. Okay. okay. <laughs> um. So the new new social media TikTok. You guys oh, on that? Boy. We are on TikTok. Uh, Taylor. Taylor is <laughs> the more ultimate on it. cringe. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor. You know, man. Like every generation has their thing. Like you know, it was Vine. Now it's TikTok. I mean, there's MySpace. There was, people, there was MySpace. People have been, I was talking about MySpace and nobody knew my, what MySpace was last <laughs> night. They're like, how old are you? I'm like, dude, I'm like 23. No, like, <laughs> MySpace is like the coolest one, too. Yeah, yeah I know. It's like, like we've got kids coding. See, it, it, yeah. it never fails, though. Yeah. It, it never fails. Every time a new social media platform comes out, everybody is like, this is stupid. This is yeah. lame. But it always becomes the next big thing. And everyone's like, how did that happen? Yeah. It's like, well, I guess you should have gotten in there when it was easier to do it. Yeah. Like now it's really hard to blow up on YouTube. Back in the day you could do it way more easily. So all True. the all the OGs <clears throat> who took the time and did it right, they're sitting pretty now. Yeah. You know? It, and like and and on a platform like TikTok, things just move that much faster. So you just kinda gotta take advantage of it while it's there. We live well, in a generation of kids with ADHD. Especially mm -hmm. in YouTube, oh, yeah. it doesn't help that like normal T V is trying to like Infiltrate oh yeah! Sooner, sooner or later, yeah. we're gonna have to start paying for YouTube, man. Yeah, once they see the money, yeah. I mean, that's when the corporations roll in and stuff. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, kill it. <laughs> uh, TikTok was one I don't understand, but I I see that you guys are on it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. We're not tailors. <laughs> I've tried. Well, it's a collective. Like, music <laughs> you, yeah. He's speaking for you, <laughs> whether you like it or not. Yeah, more content goes on there periodically. Our our account is called a band called Princess. And, and I'm pretty sure you're a band called Princess, dude. You look like a band called Princess. <laughs> <laughs> you're here. Three S's over there, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Weird. Like, how, how did that come about? The three S's. Oh, wow. Well, Why? Yeah. So, uh, we were... <laughs> Why? They, they, we, we, uh, we... So, when we formed, you know, the, the name Princess, we were talking and calling our original drummer, I guess... Um, so somebody he, threw a hissy fit of some kind. Yeah, yeah. and well, I think 
This is not Bastion Colin. He threw it. He threw a fit. He admitted to the fit. He's just like, I'm sorry. I'm such a princess about things. And I jokingly Ooh. looked at Taylor. I was just like, Princess, haha. That that's a that's a good name. Yeah, and then like name. we kind of just like yeah, was, went from there. I felt like that was a great name. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> because you know, to me, it was like Colin wasn't the only princess. Oh you're, yeah, you know, no, you're a big yeah. fucking princess. I like I hide it a little better, but I'm a princess. <laughs> but uh, then um, the, the we realized that there was a prince ban. Uh, Maya Rudolph, uh, SNL actress, um, she plays in a prince cover band called Princess, and they're all females and everything. So we're just like, oh okay. Danny brought that up, and we're just like. We didn't really know what to do. Like, let's just add an extra S. Like, he wanted to fucking do dollar signs. Yeah, I wanted dollar signs. If we're gonna add an extra S and we're gonna be that extra, why not like, go all the way? Can we not be around? like the Suicide Boys or what's that emo rapper's name? That I don't know something. It's like literally all of them, I guess. They're all tie dollar signs, right? What, what is his name? What is the emo? Don't. It's someone. It's about, um, the guy I that had the. He died. I'm sorry. They all died. Op. Yeah, Lil Pete. He Lil Pete. Have, he didn't have a dollar sign. Well, oh, he's he he yeah, he, no, could, he, he probably he's the type he, he could have. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Little Pete. Dollar Little peeps. Yeah. Little peeps. Little peeps. I actually like me some Lil Pete. Like Just it. a little bit of Lil Pete. Some a little Pete. A little bit of Lil Pete. Little Lil Pete. Gotta love it. All right. So, are you guys ready to flip it, forge it, or fuck it? Oh, I guess I guess I guess we're ready to do that. Are you guys ready? Right now? Now? Yeah, we're ready to do that now. <laughs> Which Jim Halpert, do? look in the camera. <laughs> I can do it with straight. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so they're being weird because we already recorded it. Pre-interview. Sorry to lie to you, everyone. He said it. Do we you lied. Make, do you want to tell? We're gonna put it at the end. Do you want to tell them? Yeah, I told him. I told him. We apologize. Lied. We lied. For lying to them. We edited it to be at the end instead of the beginning. Sorry, guys. Uh, but yeah, flip it, forge it, or fuck it. Which one do you want to do? Well, we are going to combine two of those things. Can we Typical do that? princesses, because, right? Got to make it difficult. Because, mm-hmm. speaking to that, that scene beef, Chris here wouldn't let us do a Billie Eilish cover. <laughs> We're not doing covers. Really yet. nicely. And we're very really upset. nicely. <laughs> we will it's never do covers. Cold. Uh-huh. Covers. <laughs> yeah, like covers like you cover yourself up. Oh, okay. Uh, well, that is a very misleading pun. <laughs> like covers us in like blankets. But yeah, we get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what so, we did was we, like we, uh, here. we combined Forge It with Flip It. So we're taking a song that we have not yet released and we are putting a different spin on it than you will hear when it comes out. Exactly. Dope. Mm-hmm. We have Double the money. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. So After do you want to get into how you wrote it, how it came about? <laughs> The new song. Do we remember that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, kind of. I mean, uh, how, how old that? is that song? The what song is? is, I believe, a year old. It turned a year old uh, the day that we recorded it three weeks ago. It turned a year old. Uh, <laughs> which is funny when you put it that way. Yeah, it took us a year to record it. But um, uh, the writing process, I mean, like, they're just kind of weird lyrics. I mean, like, kind of like. Just kind of happened. Like, yeah. the lyrics are kind of like something you'd hear, like in like Flaming Lips or like Beck or something like that. Just very yeah. weird. It has a storyteller vibe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, like the uh, a lyric in the song actually goes back to when me and Taylor were on my front porch and he had his acoustic guitar and we heard um, a scream in the middle of the night and I um, I, I was kind of disturbed by it. I was like. Should we go check on that? And I was like, I hear screams all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so we went and checked on it, and it is these uh, in my head. these yeah. two uh, Hispanic girls uh, were standing there. And we're like, are y'all okay? Like, we knocked on their door. And, uh, they were just giggling. Yeah. Just they were giggling. just like, are y'all okay? I'm like, yeah, we're fine. And then we included that. I included that lyric in the song. Maybe so, the yeah. So a little bit of storyteller vibe. Us. New direction, musically. Yeah. And as, as far as like um, as far as like the riffage and the structure and all that and like what the song, the vibe really is, because Alan's talking about you know what he usually talks about, which is his his conflict and the things that don't make sense to him and the things that he's kind of upset about. Yeah. And you know I kind of wanted to bring a happy vibe into Princess because like I didn't okay. feel like there was really like a happy vibe going on with you know anything at the time. And I was like, we should have a happy song. I want to write something that feels happy and feels upbeat and feels good, and not and not just aggressive or not just you know brooding. You know, I wanted something happy to happen. Cool. So I kind of like you know, 
I guys kind of like reached into uh, the the Strokes DNA in there, and, and, and I pulled out you know some riffs, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> cool. I, I I heard it, and it's like I, I'm I'm always wanting to do something a little bit different, so it's like with the keyboard parts, like I wanted something a little bit off kilter, and that's why I like the lead, like. Xylophone bit or is lamento. like shut up. <laughs> it's a little bit off, but it still yeah. fits. But then I also wanted to bring a synth pop vibe to it because we were trying to make it more uplifting. So there's like a little bit of a juxtaposition of just like synth poppy happy vibes. But what Alan's talking about is actually rather dark in a way. Like gotta love it. Themes of alcoholism and crazy shit, you know. Yeah. So yeah, but you guys will hear it. We've already heard it. Sorry to break the veil. But uh, <clears throat> the the juxtaposition, like you're talking about, between the guitar, the bass, and the synth, the layering that happens is like really awesome. Like I really liked it in this song. So, congrats on the new direction, new songs. We we, we wrestle with uh with, with each other a lot on you know how to how to make the right things cut through at the right times. You know, it, it, it takes us a minute there to really get that get that blend right because you know to me that's the most important thing is how are these harmonies and melodies working together so we it's kinda, a big deal yeah we kind of have to drill on that for a while yeah mm-hmm. but i think i'm i think i'm i'm pretty proud of the way that we we, we handled it on that song yeah you too. we're all proud of you too oh all of us <laughs> yeah. thanks and we're glad that you guys got back together and reformed and didn't break up and such a short little sat down with he, here with us today and did this interview and Dude. kicking it off right covid yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Off. Jesus. Yeah. Kick it out of here with Princess. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming in, guys. No problem. Or having us in. Does this mean we get to pee now? Yeah, this means you get to pee. Go pee. Okay. Yeah, I really need to. So, <laughs> Princess, sign off. Tell them what song you're going to do. Flip it, forge it, fuck it. What's the song called? The song's called After Eight. After, After Eight. eight. Yep. All right. After, After eight. eight by Princess. Thanks for coming in, guys. All right.
Three, two, one, go.